So I'm finally back and really excited to get back to work on this thing. The first thing I wanted to do was try to get this front bumper to fit a little bit better. I got to messing with it and disaster struck. Luckily though, the glue joint broke and not the actual piece. That's awesome because now I could glue it in where it's supposed to go. So I'm trying to show you how this is supposed to fit, but it's still got a bit of glue residue kind of fighting me. Oh well, since it's off though, it gives me a good chance to go in here and get it all cleaned up. These corners need to be as close to 90 degrees as possible. This front bumper still wasn't fitting as well as I wanted it to, so I went in and I shaved down the inside of it to remove material so I could essentially weaken it. What this done is it allowed me to squeeze those outside edges in to be in flush with the body which you will see here very, very soon. Almost. Almost. Yep, there it is. That's how this is supposed to fit. So from there, I'm just gonna work my way from the front of the car all the way to the back, starting with cleaning up all them ugly mold lines. Now, I would love to say that this is a good clean mold, but I would be lying to myself. I'm fairly certain the previous owner of this kit had gone in and done a whole lot of cleanup. I do not remember the kit that I built so many years ago being this clean. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. A lot of the gloss from a fresh mold has been knocked down too. Yeah, I, he cleaned this up. He had to have. Now the rear, it doesn't require any work on our part. This thing just slots right in and fits, and it fits well. Now while it's holding it and moving it around, some big nasty mold seams inside these wheel arches. So I'm going to go ahead and get them cleaned up here real quick. With the front and rear done, we can move towards the top of the car. This rear bonnet also had a nasty seam going all the way around it, especially on the hinges. We still got a ways to go. Then I remember that I'm going to put a couple coats of paint and a couple coats of clear on this. So I get just a bit sand happy and really shave those things down. Perfect. Now this should tighten up just a bit with paint and clear, but nothing so extreme that it's going to make it stick or hold open. Now this is where I'm going to need your guys' help. I don't know if I want to do a hard top again like I did with my original, or do the moonroof thing. Sunroof, moonroof, the glass top, I don't know what it's called. Naturally, if I do the glass top, I'm going to tint it, and I'm going to paint all the surrounds here so it looks proper. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys want to see down in the comments. 
Now, while we're up top here, we'll get use one last thing that I want to do. And you guys know me, for these small fiddly parts like this, it could break off super easy. I like to pin them in place. I'm going to leave these pins a little bit long for now, because I'm going to use them to help me locate exactly where I want this thing to go. Locating this thing is fairly easy. You just want it as far forward as you can without hitting the rear bonnet. And once we're there, I'm just going to do a quick look to make sure it's flush on the edges. Then I'm just going to press down a little bit hard, and those pins are going to leave marks on that masking tape. This one's extremely easy to see, but the one on the driver's side... Eh, there it is, right there. Off camera, I drilled those holes out. So I'm going to pop this in place real quick here just to see if it looks right. Now in a real car, this rear wing it should be just a tiny tad bit in front of that spoiler thing. You should be able to see just a bit of daylight through it. It's also fairly flush with the rear bumper. Here's the real car to help you visualize it. And of course, I always like to pin the mirrors in place as well. I'm going to try to get these pins bent into shape now, just so I'm not kind of prying against the body to get them in position later once it's all painted and cleared. And these things actually landed right about where I want them. Not a lot of adjustment was needed here. The front bumper could easily be glued in place now. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. Just so I'm not taking a risk and damaging the paint later on down the road. On the rear bonnet, I tried to scribe out the vents. But they just kept breaking off. I decided to cut my losses and just... Just step away from it. A few of them will be open. You guys have all seen me paint before. Not going to waste a whole lot of time here. For anyone that's new or just found your way here. What I'm doing is I'm just building up a whole bunch of extremely light mist coats. Now I went back and forth on the original color a whole lot, and I got looking at the box art, I'm like, you know what, that's a fairly somewhat decent green lotus it chose for this, so let's paint it lotus green. Which you guys probably already know, because I ruined the surprise with a thumbnail. Oops. Some kind of flying bug just flew up there. Doing a quick little check to make sure it's not stuck in the paint. So just like the primer, i done two really light mist coats. And then for the final coat, we call that a wet coat. I just kind of laid it on a little bit heavy just to kind of have a wet surface. Being that this kit 
did not come with any decals. I went to the aftermarket. It says that I could use both micro saw and I could cover it in clear. I don't generally trust instructions, so I wanted to test that here real quick. The instructions did not lie. This decal done so well that I'm convinced, and I'm going to go ahead and install the one single decal that this whole car gets. Now, I spent too much of my vacation not being able to walk a straight line. My vision is still kind of blurry, so I'm going to measure this thing just to make sure it's where I want it to be. This looks to be exactly 11 millimeter on each side. Uh, I could be happy with that. I'm running kind of low on my decal juice. I got to get way down there deep to get it. I'm going to ever so gently just dab this on there. I don't want to brush it on and risk moving that decal that I had wasted so much time getting exactly perfectly centered. I'm going to be using some rattle can clear here. I got a little bit sidetracked on the Memorial Day sale that Splash Paints was running, and I don't have any 2K clear. I just completely forgot to order it. That's okay though. It still looks fairly decent. It just doesn't dry ass. Oh, that bug is back. All right, where where was I? Oh yeah, the rattle can clear. It can look just as good as 2K clear if you lay it out right. The problem is it doesn't dry as hard, so it doesn't polish out as well. It does polish out decently though, you just gotta do it all by hand and stay away from the aggressive machine polishing. Now usually I do a whole lot of before and after photos here. I, I rushed through this, I didn't get a lot of photos. So instead, I'm gonna give you guys some bonus content here. Now, I usually like to test fit everything and mock it up just to make sure I'm not going to have any problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys what the ride height looks like on this thing. At 1 to 24 scale, 1 millimeter is approximately 1 scale inch. That means that this would have a 4 inch gap between the top of the tire and the fender well. That's about what a modern day four wheel drive truck has. The rear is a little bit better, but not by much. I don't have it fully mocked up, but right now it's right at three millimeters. Now, luckily, it's all real easy to fix, especially the rear. The rear is on a control arm, so we can control the right height just by trimming the shocks. I'll show you guys how to do all of this once we get to the chassis portion of this build. So stay tuned guys. Now that I'm back home, there's no excuse. I'm going to get some content and some videos out to you. Thank you for watching.